Have you ever wondered why do jetliners such as the 320s, 350s, 777s and so on all perform final approaches with a nose up attitude? Or perhaps why they all tend to have their wings swept back? Well, in this video, we will answer these questions in details. Hi everyone, thanks for clicking and welcome back to my channel. In this video, you will learn all about the characteristics of swept back wings, pros and cons. So without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, we all know engineers wouldn't adopt a global technique on fast aircraft just to make them look cool. So the real answer is that it lets them fly faster by reducing drag. A swept wing just looks like it has less drag. Explaining why is more difficult. And the answer might surprise you. Sweeping the wings makes the wing feel like it's flying slower. That in turn delays the onset of supersonic airflow over the wing, which delays wave drag. But it's not all benefit. There is a hefty price which shows up at slow speeds. Now, let's look at this statement. Flying almost supersonic means that the air is going supersonic. So what does that mean? You know that the air accelerates as it travels over the top of a wing. It's a basic part of Bernoulli's principle. So if you are flying near the speed of sound, say Mach 0.8 for example, the air flowing over the wing could speed up to Mach 1 or plus. Now you have supersonic flow. Your critical Mach number or Mach grit is the speed where air flowing over the wing first reaches Mach 1. And by the way, it doesn't specifically has to be over the wing. It can be on any part of the aircraft. Well, what's the problem with that, you may ask? The airflow doesn't stay supersonic forever. It speeds up, exceeds Mach 1, and then slows back down to a subsonic speed. The faster you fly, the more sub supersonic air travels over the wing. However, when the air slows down below Mach 1, it creates a shock wave. As the air flows along the wing, it sends out pressure waves which move at the speed of sound. That means the pressure waves can't move forward through the supersonic airflow. Instead, they build up into a massive pressure, what we refer to as shock wave. That shock wave generates lots of drag. The air flowing over the wing crosses a massive pressure boundary, which sucks energy out of the airflow, causing drag. Plus, the air can lose so much energy that it separates from the wing, causing more drag. This drag is called wave drag. All right, now let's break down the following statement. Sweeping the wing back delays supersonic flow. How does wing sweep help prevent wave drag, you may ask? It delays the start of the supersonic flow by reducing the amount of acceleration over the wing. On a straight wing airplane, like mostly in uh, general aviation aircraft, all of the airflow over the wing travels parallel to the aircraft's core line. But on a sweep wing, only some of the air flows are parallel to the cord line. The other part flows perpendicular to the cord. This is called spanwise flow. Only the component of airflow flowing parallel to the cord line accelerates. So by reducing the amount of airflow flowing parallel to the cord line, you've reduced the amount of acceleration and delayed your critical Mach number. Now you can fly at a higher Mach number before you start to create wave drag. And this is exactly how swept wing aircraft or swept wing design helps aircraft fly faster before they reach their critical Mach number and before creating wave drag and shock waves for that matter. Now, like we said before at the uh, start of the video, it's not all good news. There's a hefty price swept back wings pay and especially at low speeds. Because you may know, swift back wings aircraft have the worst characteristics when it comes to slow flight. So when you reduce the amount of air flowing parallel to the core line, you reduce the amount of lift the wing creates. At high speed, this isn't a problem. Your high airspeed requires a small angle of attack to create lift anyway. However, at slow speeds, you are at a high angle of attack. And sweeping the wing can force a very high angle of attack or nearing your stalling angle of attack or critical angle of attack. So to counter this, swept wing aircraft use extensive flap system like Fowler flaps, leading and edge slap. Now, sweeping the wings also affect the stall pattern. The amount of spanwise flow compounds as you approach the wing tip, decreasing the wing tip's effective airspeed and thickening the boundary layer. This can cause the wing tip to stall before the wing root, meaning you lose aileron control at the onset of the stall. 
To counter this, engineers place flow fences or fences on the wing to stop the spanway's flow from building up in the first place. And here's a great example of a Russian uh, 150 bomber. The problem with this design, however, is it, it creates a huge amount of drag. Because look at those 90 degree joints over here. Now, if you think back of parasite drag, the third component was interference drag. It's one of the worst types of drags. This is why we do not see this type of design very often nowadays. Another issue that comes with the sweat bank wings is its poor low speed handling characteristics, especially during takeoffs and landings. Because, as we have said earlier, sweeping the wing back results in a decrease of parallel airflow, which in turn reduces the speed of the airflow itself and reducing the amount of lift being generated. This makes the aircraft feel like it's flying slower. Well, this is perfectly fine in high speed or cruise phase, but what happens when the aircraft is actually flying slower? Here's where those high speed devices come in play. By high speed devices, I mean leading edge flaps or slats and trailing edge flaps. Their job is to help the aircraft fly slower without stalling. And it does that by first delaying the airflow separation and then re-energizing the boundary layer and third increasing CL max by increasing uh, or by creating a larger camber. This is one of the primary reasons why the big jets uh, come in for landing with a high nose up attitude because very uh, because they need to increase their angle of attack high enough to generate enough lift for the appropriate VRF or approach speed. All right. Now just a quick revision about the Mach rate or the critical Mach number is the Mach number at which the first supersonic flow occurs. It might be on the wing, it might be on the fuselage, it could be on the tail, it's somewhere on the airplane. It doesn't have to be on the wing. All right, uh, just a quick bonus right here, guys. Uh, this is the formula with which you can calculate the Mach number. This one is very beneficial for those of you who are still in ground school. It will help you um, with a lot of questions in uh, the uh, general navigation uh, subject. Fantastic. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the end of this uh, short video about sweep uh, back wings. If you have any questions, suggestions about any uh, topic of anything I have said, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below and I'll be more than happy to answer you guys. And make sure to follow me on my Instagram. It's ATPL uh, student. The link in the description below. And until the next video, see ya.